Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This video tutorial is for this really pretty bag called the Colby Sling Pack by OO Creations. I have to admit, this is a really fun sew and it's a great adventurous beginner bag. There's lots of techniques that you're going to learn that'll help build on the skills you already have. It's a really great bag. It's so fun to make and it's great for a day out, great for if you're traveling. You can use a twist lock here to make this so that it's even more secure, great for a toddler bag, anything like that. So this is a really great bag. So before I discuss the features with you, there was just a few things I wanted to make note of. First thing is, is this is filmed like a sew along type video. So that means nothing is sped up, nothing is slowed down, nothing is cut out. The only time I won't sew something on camera is if I've already done it once on camera, I'll go off and sew the other ones off camera. And I just feel that you don't need to sit and watch me sew something that's the same two, three, four times over. It just makes the tutorial too long and I just don't feel like that's necessary. So the other thing is that there are um, no measurements, no pattern pieces, no rulers, cutting mats, nothing shown on camera. And this is for not only the protection of the designer, but also because I often film during testing and many times things can change and I don't want that to affect my tutorial. So this way here, if something changes, my tutorial stays the same and there's no worry about me having to add little, you know, um, blurbs of information in the video itself, trying to edit that in or putting it down in the description. So this just makes it really easy and nothing changes so you will need to have your pattern either open beside you on another device or even on the device you're watching this video on so that you can follow along because I don't even mention seam allowances at all just in case those change so that is the information that I wanted to give you so this tutorial is really for you to help you and guide you through making this bag so if there's parts that you don't want to watch or you're finding it's really long, definitely use the options on YouTube to speed the video up. You can even slow it down. It will make my voice sound funny either way, but you can do that and really make this so that it's comfortable for you to be able to sew along. You just wanna watch one part, see how it's done? Watch one part, see how it's done. This is here to help you. So now let's discuss the bag. As you can see, there is a flap, and as I was mentioning, you can put a twist lock. I used a magnetic snap. So when we open that up, there is a pocket here on the front. So a little slip pocket so that, you know, you could put something like uh, maybe your phone in or anything that you want to put in there if you feel that, that you feel secure enough to have it there. You can put your phone there. You'll notice this bag closes with a drawstring so you can really cinch this up or you can, you know, have it wherever you feel comfortable with it being. When you pull it and you open it up, you'll notice inside the bag there is a pocket here for a water bottle and then there is this sunglasses pocket so I'll just take my glasses off and I'm trying to do this on camera so it seems a little bit backwards so looking at the camera and doing it so my glasses fit uh, right into that pocket so you can see them there they fit right in there right into that pocket so that's really nice nice little extra feature to be able to have somewhere to put your glasses to keep it safe water bottle will fit oops sorry right into that pocket there so you see it there it fits right into that pocket another great feature if you don't want those you don't want that pocket and you don't want that cell uh, that um sunglass pocket just omit them and then you just have the bag just like that there is this zipper pocket here, so great for putting your wallet into or anything else that you kind of want to keep a little bit more secure. Then you cinch it closed, as I mentioned. Flip the flap over, snap your magnetic snap in place, and I like to tuck the string into that front pocket. On the back, we have a handle, and then we have our strap, our sling strap here, which you can clip it to either side of the bag because everybody has their preference for what side they wear their bag off so this is nice or bag on sorry so this is nice to have because if you like to wear it on your right shoulder or your left you are able to wear it on whichever side you want the strap is also adjustable so you do have that option and the handle here which is great for if you just want to carry it around so you do have that handle there too again a really great bag I did the bottom out of vinyl just because I figure if I'm putting this down or anybody's putting it down, the vinyl kind of protects it a little bit more. Again, this is a really great bag. It's a great bag if you're traveling and you just want to have something that you could put your water, your sunglasses in, maybe, you know, a sun hat or something that you can squish up and just put it in the bag. 
you know, just anything that you want to have for if you're going out really quick or, you know, make it really dressy, dress it up. And then you have a dressy bag, anything, just have fun with it. It's a really great bag. I really had fun with this and I think it's really cute, really great design. So again, this is the Colby Sling Pack by OO Creations. Let's get started making our bag. The very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. The reason for this is because it not only familiarizes you with the pattern, but it also lets you know what pattern pieces need to be cut and how. And also oftentimes designers give information regarding different interfacings that are used. Maybe you're using different fabrics than the designer is using. So they'll give information regarding these. So you may need to use a different interfacing depending on the materials or you may be able to use a different material. So there's always that extra information in the pattern and also information regarding whether it's important or not to use the same materials that the designer is using. Once you've read through the pattern, you're ready to cut out your pattern pieces. I've already gone ahead and done that, and I've also gone ahead and fused all my interfacing. So that is given in the pattern all the instructions for how to fuse the interfacing. For example, there is this sunglass pocket where you will need to fuse the interfacing at the measurements given in the pattern, so you'll want to reference that. And I've also gone ahead and made some marks that are given in the pattern. Now, some marks I cannot make until I've constructed parts of the bags, so I will go off camera to do that. But for this, for example, on the flap, I've already gone ahead, as you can see, fused the stabilizer and also made a mark there. I've also made markings that need to be made on the centers and marked my center of these pattern pieces. So I've done some markings and that just helps make it so that the tutorial doesn't take that little extra time. And it's also helpful for when we get to that step, I don't have to worry about stopping to make those center marks or make these markings. I also have all my hardware gathered that I'm going to be using. So in this pattern, there is an option to use a magnetic snap or a twist lock. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a magnetic snap. I'm also using a combination of quilting cotton and vinyl. Now there are some pieces where you will want to pay attention because it is better if you don't use vinyl on those pieces. So the only ones I'm using it for are the flap and my bottom. I didn't want to use it anywhere else because I don't want to have a hard time trying to turn some of the pieces right sides out. But I do have my little baggie here of my hardware that I'll need. I've also got my zipper and my cording and my elastic in here just so that it's all together and I don't lose it. But I will show you how to install the magnetic snap. You'll want to refer to your manufacturer's instructions. If you're using a twist lock, the instructions are given in the pattern for the markings, for where to place it, etc. So you'll want to also refer to that. So I have that in a little bag. That just makes it easier. So like I said, it's all together. I don't have to go searching for it. Once you have all your pattern pieces cut, your interfacing fused, and your markings, whatever markings you want to do, once those are all done, we can get started on making our bag. And the first thing we need is our strap support. So it'll look like this. And on the strap support, you're going to want to draw a line, just like I did, down the entire center of the strap. Then what you're going to do is fold your long edges in to meet that center line. And you can take this to your iron and give it a press. So you'll fold those long edges in to meet that center line. For the tutorial, I'm just going to use a piece of double-sided tape to help fold it down. And then I'll press it when I go again, because I know there's going to be a time where I'm going to need to press something. So I'll just give this a good press then, so that I'm not going off camera so much. Less getting up and down makes me happy. So I'm just using some double-sided tape here. And that's just so that I can press this in and it'll hold it in the center. So again, those long edges on your strap support are going to be folded into the center and meet that center line. So just like that, meets the center line. I'll fold the second edge in to meet the center line. Just like that. And that's how it looks when it's folded into the center. So we have the raw edges. When we go to stitch this to the bag, there will be no raw edges shown. So it folds into the center. So we can put this off to the side for now. We're going to move on to our strap anchors. So you would have cut these from webbing. So we have two strap anchors and you need your D-rings. 
if you're not using D-rings and you're using triangle rings, you can cut, you can use those. If you're using rectangle rings, whatever hardware you're using. I need to get mine out of the little baggie. I like to keep them in the baggie until I use them just to prevent them from any potential damage, any scratches or anything like that. So now what we're going to do, sorry about that, is take the D-ring and take your strap anchor and we're going to put a D-ring onto the strap anchor. Fold the strap anchor in half like that and put a clip on the end. Do that for both. So D-ring on the strap anchor, fold it so those short edges meet, clip the end. Now we're going to baste this short edge together. And what I like to do is I like to start with my needle down inside the on the strap anchor, so down. And that way there it just prevents when I go to feed it through, it prevents the strap anchor from shifting. So what I find sometimes happens if I just start without the needle down inside the fabric, when we start moving along, my presser foot tends to push the top one while the bottom one is being pushed or pulled by the feed dogs. So sometimes this ends up happening, you get this little shift in fabric. So when you start with your needle down inside the fabric first, I find that that prevents the shifting because your needle is sort of locking it in place. So there's one. And now I'm going to stitch the other one. And again, put my needle down. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just trimming my threads. So line up the short edges, make sure my long edges are aligned. Needle down and then make sure I backstitch. Cut all your threads because we don't want these little peekaboo threads when we go to sew our bag. And that's how it'll look. So you've got your D-ring, see it's attached, it doesn't come off. So now we can set these to the side for now and I just put a clip to clip it together and I just hang it over here on my thread rack. Now we're going to move on to making our strap sling. So for that we need our strap sling pieces. I'm just trying to grab mine without knocking everything on the floor. So we're going to grab one of our strap slings. <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to grab one of our strap slings and we're going to grab our strap for the strap. So you will have two pieces left, put the one piece off to the side. So you have your strap here. You're going to place the strap so that it is protruding out the bottom and the bottom is this short edge here, the one that's the smaller edge. So this kind of looks like a Y. If you look at it, it looks like a Y. So we want the bottom of the Y and you want to place your webbing so that some of it is protruding out the bottom. So you see how it's protruding out the bottom here? And there is a measurement for how much of your webbing will protrude out the bottom. And you'll want to center it on the bottom edge of this strap sling. <clears throat> so it'll look just like that. So see how it protrudes off the bottom? And then we have this long piece that comes up off the top. And that's right, you wanna make sure that long piece is up off the top. And the reason for that is once we get this all sewn together and turned right side out, you have it so that it hangs off the bottom. So now we're going to baste this in place along the bottom edge where we just placed that webbing. And you can do the same thing, oh no, my needle came unthreaded. You can do the same thing as I did with the um, strap anchors needle down so that nothing shifts on you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then make sure you baste in place. So back stitch two, cut your threads, and then it'll look like this when you're done. So now that we have that attached, we need to take the other strap sling, so the remaining slap, strap sling, strap sling, and <laughs> place it so it is right sides or pretty sides touching on top of the other one, and you'll be sandwiching your webbing in the middle. So now we're going to pin this all together. So pin it all together. Pin or clip. I use clips, some people use pins. So 
I'm just clipping it all the way along. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down both sides and across the bottom. So you'll go down one side, go across the bottom, and up the top. Now, if you want, for some extra reinforcement, you can go ahead and stitch across this here just a couple extra times, just to back stitch. And what that'll do is that'll help lock everything in and it'll help secure your webbing there to make sure that it doesn't, you know, have, fall out because this will take on a lot of um, stress when you're using it, clipping it and unclipping it. So you can back stitch across here a couple times just to help give it that extra bit of security. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and stitch using the seam allowance given in the pattern. full so I'm going to eventually run out of bobbin here I know it hopefully I can get this all stitched before that happens though and sometimes in corners what I like to do is take an extra stitch to prevent those angled stitches so I put my stitch length to zero take one stitch return my stitch length back to the length I used for stitching and then continue and I'm at the strap here so I'm going to back stitch Again, this just gives extra security because this will be a high stress piece, but just because you're going to be clipping and unclipping and putting it over your body, so it just helps give that extra security there. Um, I hit my speed on the machine, so I'm going slow. those threads and that's how it looks so far with it stitched now I'm just going to clip these corners here not clipping the webbing at all so don't trim your webbing I'm just trimming my corners so that this turns out nicer for me now we need to turn this or sorry now we need to push the webbing off to one side. So just like that. So see how I've pushed it or pulled it off to one side. And I'm gonna put a clip there to help hold it in place. Now we need to sew this U here of our Y. So you can go ahead and clip that in place. <clears throat> going to sew the U here. So again, make sure that webbing is out of the way. You may want to feel for it as you're sewing so that you don't accidentally get it caught under your needle. And if you're nervous about sewing this curve, what you can do is with your needle down, lift your presser foot up, pivot your fabric a little bit, take one stitch, needle down again lift your presser foot up pivot your fabric a little bit another stitch and do that all the way around and that way there you'll get a really nice curve you can also draw your seam allowance on your curve so that you can just stitch right on top of that seam allowance and that'll help keep that nice accurate seam allowance for you <clears throat> but that's how it looks when we stitch that u now you want to clip this curve. You can make snips into it or you can use pinking shears. So I'm just using pinking shears and for some reason it just feels a little weird. And again, make sure you don't cut your webbing at all. So it just looks like that. And what we're doing here is you're making those snips so that when we turn this right sides out, it makes it easier to get that curve there. Now we're going to turn this right sides out through one of the top sections here. And this may seem a little bit difficult, 
but you'll be able to do it. Just take your time. And you're turning it through the section that the webbing is sticking out of. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just turn this a little bit. And just keep maneuvering it. This will probably be the hardest part of the whole bag, I can tell you that. So as you'll see, I'm just slowly feeding it up through this little opening. As I'm doing that, I'm pulling what I can. Now, another option, if you want, is to leave one of the side edges open to turn this. I like to do what the designer has us doing in the video, just so that you can see how it's done. But if you have issues with your hands like I do, um, you can definitely leave one of the side edges open and then just turn that edge under after when we top stitch and top stitch it so that it's turned under. Ow. And just keep going until you get it all turned out. If this part is boring to you, you can go ahead and fast forward this part until we're past where I'm turning it. Or maybe you're working with me while you're turning yours right sides out. It's starting to hurt my hands. Just once you get past that first little bit, like where the, all that real bulk is at the top, that's where it's a little bit hard, but as you can see, it's starting to want to come out better. There. So as you can see, it was a little bit easier. Once I got past all this, where you're trying to feed this top part in, it was a little bit easier. So now what I'm going to do is reach in with my turning tool and push it all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to really take my time to poke out all those corners, or not all, there's only two, <laughs> the two corners, just to get nice corners because that's why I trimmed that area. And I also like to run my tool along my seam to really help push that seam so that it flattens it. So I like to push it against the seam. Just trying to get it as flat as you can. Just like that. And that's how it looks. Now I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give this a really good press to get it really nice and flat. And if I need to, I'll use my turning tool again to turn out anything that's not quite poked out enough. But I'm going to take this to my iron, give it a press, and then I'll come back and we will continue on. So really, the hardest part of this whole bag is done right here. And it's nice to get it over with. So I'll go do that and come back and we'll finish up. We're all nicely pressed now, I gave it a really good press. Another thing you can do if you want is you can spray this or use steam. So spray it with a bit of water or use steam and that'll really help you press it. Now, if you've decided to use a vinyl for this, you may have noticed that it's really hard to turn through that opening. So you're going to want to turn on the side as I was mentioning, because turning through this opening with vinyl, as this one even, I was going to use soft vinyl for it, but I went against it. And as you can see, soft vinyl really scrunches up. But I was just really worried that I was going to struggle and I didn't want to be struggling too much on my video. I'm going to have to repress that because now I made that wrinkly. Um, so definitely turn it on the side if you're using vinyl so that you don't have too much struggle. 
And you'll want to make sure that you keep a really accurate seam allowance. It's very important for later on in the pattern. So now that we're done this, we can top stitch our strap along the edges. And you can do two lines of top stitching if you want. So you're going to top stitch down the side, across the bottom, up the other side, and here inside this U shape as well. So put your stitch length to the length you like to use for top stitching. Oh, you know what? And I know my bobbin was almost empty, so I'm going to take this out and I'm going to fill up another bobbin and I'll come right back because you don't need to watch me fill up a bobbin. I have a couple of them here, but they're almost empty and I'm trying to use them up. So I'm going to fill up another bobbin and I'll come back. All right, now I have a full bobbin. I like to do, start with a full bobbin when I'm top stitching, so I'll use those other two later. We're going to top stitch all around our strap using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you can do two lines of stitching if you want on your strap. Tara says this gives it a sportier look. Or maybe you just like it and like how it looks. So I will do two lines of stitching. And if you're worried about those angle stitches in the corners, what you can do is stop in the corner, take that one short stitch length that I had mentioned earlier, and take one stitch and then continue on. And I'm stitching across the top here where the opening is, just because I don't have to back stitch or anything. And I'm just taking my time going around this curve here. So now I'm going to do a second line of stitching. right back up and I'm stitching over top of my previous, we'll call them basting stitches. And then back down around this curve. Now take your time on the curve. your strap will look and I don't know if it's hard to see I'll zoom there you go you can see I did two rows of stitching all the way around I'm just going to make sure my zoom didn't change or my um, uh, manual zoom or manual focus didn't change so that's how that looks now another thing if you want you can add a little rivet on the bottom here to help where this piece of the strap is because you can feel where that is you could add some rivets here if you want, and I may do that after, but I'm not going to do it in the tutorial because it's not part of the pattern. But that'll add extra security here too for some strength on where this strap is, but you have lots of stitching holding that in place. So now we're going to put this off to the side for now. We're going to grab our flap, and the flap piece will be the one that you have this piece of um, interfacing fused to it. So I have it here. So what you need to do is measure from the bottom up and centered and make a mark like I did here. So you'll want to do that. And as I mentioned previously, I am using a magnetic snap. So I will show you how I'm installing my magnetic snap. And 
you do want to follow your manufacturer's instructions. So my way may not be the way your manufacturer of your magnetic snap wants you to install them. This is just the way I'm doing it. And the magnetic snap that you're using, you'll want that half and your half of your washer. Oh, of course I would drop that, right? Thankfully it's all magnetic and it all stuck together. So with your washer and your seam ripper, if you're using quilting cotton for this part, you'll want to use some fray stop or fray check, any seam sealant that you have to put over the slits you're going to make. So with your washer, you're going to line up the center of the washer with the mark you made. So the center of the mark. And you'll trace the washer line. So you see there how it looks? those two little ones on each side of the center, those are my washer marks. Now, if you're nervous about pushing your seam ripper too far, and I know I'm using vinyl, but what I like to do, even though I'm using vinyl, is at the top where this top mark is for the washer, I'll put my needle or pin in at that mark, and I'll come out at the mark where the other washer is. Just like that. So see how it went in where one mark is and out where the other? And what that does is that prevents me from pushing too far and ripping up too far because as you'll see right now my pin is stopping my seam ripper from going any further. Just a little trick. Remove my pin and because the pin went where the washer holes or marks were there's no extra pin marks in my vinyl. So now we need to install our washer. So put your washer through where those slits are. Or not your washer, your magnetic snap, sorry the washer over it and then turn that so that the washer you put the prongs down and one little extra step I like to do is put some tape over those prongs I'm just going to give this a really good press. I'm just going to go off camera and press this really well because you can press on the wrong side of this vinyl, which I love, just to help get those wrinkles out that I made when I was scrunching it up to show you how pliable soft vinyl is. So I just gave it a press just to sort of flatten it out again. So there we go. That's done. We have our magnetic snap installed. And the magnetic snap that I use, the side, the piece that it is, it'll be the male half that you put in through there in case you're wondering. Now we need to take both flat pieces and place them right sides together. So pretty sides touching. I'm going to put that away so it's not in my way. Line up your top edge, place clips all along the edge. all along the side edges as well. And then what we will do is we will sew all along the side edges across this bottom curved edge here and back up the other side edge. We're going to leave that top straight edge open for turning this right sides out. And this one will be much, much easier than the strap was. I can promise you that. Much easier to turn because it's such a wide opening at that top here. So that's how it looks clipped together. Now, as I said, we're going to go down the side around this bottom curve and back up the other side. If your stitch length is at your top stitching length, don't forget to return it back to the length you like to use for stitching. And of course, my thread came out of my needle. Again, I must be hitting it. I must just be hitting it just that little bit when I'm moving around here. There we go. So now we're going to stitch all the way around using the seam allowance given in the pattern. worried about all these curves and keeping a very accurate seam allowance, draw your seam allowance. Don't be afraid to always draw your seam allowance. 
It's whatever is going to make things easier for you and more enjoyable too. And you'll be happier with the outcome of your bag. It's worth the time. You really want to enjoy making your bag. And you want to have results that you're going to be really happy with too. So now we need to take our pinking shears and we need to trim these edges. You can also notch them, so cut little snips into the seam without cutting your stitches. If you don't have pinking shears, that's an uh, option. Sometimes when my hands are really hurting, I'll just use the scissors and make little snips because I, for some reason I find my pinking shears are a little bit harder to use. They're a bit stiffer and they've been like that since they were new, but they do cut really well. So now it's all notched. Now we're going to turn this right sides out. And I probably just wrinkled this again, so I'm going to need to heat up my ironing board and run this over my ironing board just to get out the wrinkles. I'll do that after the bag is complete though. So using my turning tool or whatever tool you have for getting your corners poked out, I'm pushing out all the seams just to make sure they're all nicely pushed out. Just like that. Another thing, you can use clips to help hold this, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to place clips along my edges just to help keep this all flat. And then we're going to top stitch this. And you'll base that top straight edge closed as well. And if you'd really like, and I know this isn't in the pattern, but you could do two lines of stitching on this too to match your strap if you'd really like. And I, I won't do that because that's not in the pattern, but just a suggestion, a little extra suggestion if you want to do that. So put your, sti your, length, your stitch length to the length you like using for top stitching. And I'm going to switch to my Teflon foot. Normally I don't need it for soft vinyl, but I'm going to switch to it because it is a little bit hot today. While I love that we're still having nice weather, it's very humid. So sometimes when it's humid, my presser foot still sticks to my vinyl. So Teflon foot to the rescue. Another thing is you can sew with this so that your magnetic snap is facing up so you can see where it is and it doesn't get stuck on your machine. Just a little tip. And I'm just going slowly around the corners as I mentioned earlier, one stitch at a time, lifting my presser foot up to really get around those corners. All of this is totally worth every extra second it takes. And I think this looks so cool, top stitch, with this rainbow thread. Alright, so snipping all my threads. There it is, it's all top stitched all the way around and as I said I took one stitch at a time to go around those curves and it's really worth it to take that extra time to get around those curves. So that's how it looks. Now if you're using a twist lock there are instructions for how to install the twist lock so you don't need to make that mark and install a snap or make holes or anything you're going to sew this all together and then do your twist lock. So the twist lock is done after because you have to cut through both layers of the flap. Now, moving along, we need to grab the back top and I'm going to remove my little tape because I label everything. Sometimes I write right on the piece what it is. I didn't this time. So you're going to take the back top and lay it right side up and you're going to align. And the other thing too is, is you can baste across this top edge, which I forgot to do. So I'm just going to do that quickly. There we go. That just holds that close and makes it easier when you're aligning things. It doesn't shift on you. 
There we go. So now we're going to take this raw edge of the flap and place it along the bottom side of the back top. And your flap will be so that the um, magnetic snap half, so this half where I see the magnetic snap, it'll be against your table. So it's going to look just like this. And you want this centered. So find your centers. So what I do is just fold this in half. Make your marks within your seam allowance. Fold this one in half. And this might be a little bit more tricky for me to make. Marks with. Oops, I just dropped my pencil in the trash. I'll try to use this friction pen to make my mark. You want to line up the center mark so that this is nice and centered. And I can't really see the center mark, but that's okay. All right. So again, with the bottom of the flap aligned with the bottom of the back top, line up your center mark so you get this centered. And again, it's raw edge of the flap aligned with the bottom edge of the bottom top. And your magnetic snap, you shouldn't be seeing it, it should be against your table. If it's your twist lock, the nicer side of your twist lock will be what you're looking at right now, the nicer side of the twist lock, so the side that doesn't have the screws. So you have the side that you screwed in on this side, and then the side that doesn't have screws, so the nicer plate. And that's how it looks so far. Now we're going to baste along the flap, so basting it to the top piece. Now we have our flap attached to the top piece, just like this. Now we need to take the back bottom. I'm just going to find, I did have everything in order of how we're putting this together, but now that I'm grabbing everything, it's kind of not. So now we take our back bottom piece and we need to place this so it is right sides on top of the flap. So the pretty side of your back bottom will be pretty sides touching the top of your flap. So the flap, we're going to call this the exterior side of the flap. You're going to line up those, those edges. So the edge of the flap, the raw edge of the flap with the long edge of the back bottom. Clip it all in place. You can even use your center marks if you have center marks. I didn't mark center marks on this piece. I don't know why. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this along this edge here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. goes down towards the back bottom. So when you have this, you have it like this. Flip it over so we're now looking at the flap. Take the flap, bring it up, and what happens when you do that is, you see how I have a little bump here? That's because that seam is going down, and we're going to press this. Now I can't press this with my iron, so I'm just going to finger press. Oh, you know what, I always forget. I have this little seam roller and I always forget. So I'm going to use my seam roller. is not a traditional sewing seam roller. This was what my husband bought me a while back. I don't even remember when. And it's for wallpapering, but you use it for seams there, so why not make it work for this? So there you go, I've pressed that seam nice and flat. If you're using uh, quilting cotton for your flap and your bottom, you can take this to your iron and press it. We're not top stitching yet. Now we need to take this piece measure it to make sure it's going to be the right measurement so i will do that off camera and while i'm off camera we will also fuse 
which I know it's going to be the right size because it's the same size as my stabilizer. Fuse our stabilizer, so the, the remaining fleece, to the back side of this. Then we're going to top stitch this seam. So I'll go measure, make sure this is accurate, just to be extra, extra um, sure. And then I'm going to fuse my stabilizer and I'll come back. So I'm going to pause the video, do that, and come back. I measured and made sure it was the right size and I fused that interfacing to the back piece. So now we're going to top stitch along this edge and the edge you're top stitching along is under the flap where we pressed it down. The back bottom is what we're stitching on. So increase your stitch length and stitch along that edge. all your little threads it is worth it return your stitch length to the length you use for stitching and that's how it looks I don't know if you can oh yeah you can see that I stitched right here oh right here along that edge so now the back bottom is done for that piece oh no we're not done sorry I have to read sorry I kind of had my pages here zoomed in so now we need to take this back and having it right side up so you have your flap here, again, the magnetic snap is going to be on the table. We need to draw two lines. So there's measurements for these lines. So I'm going to go off camera because as I mentioned earlier, I don't show rulers or anything on camera. So I'm going to go make those lines and then I'm going to come back and we will add the strap sling and the strap support and everything else. So I'll go do that, then we'll come back and we will continue on. So I've made those marks. And again, there's two marks that you're going to make from this seam. So one mark here and one mark here. And then I've marked the center of this bottom line. Now we need to take our handle, and this is your handle here, it's cut out of webbing, and we're going to place it at that bottom line, and we're going to place it to the right or to the left of that line. So there's my marking right there and I'm going to place this in line with this bottom line that I drew across. So the bottom of the strap handle is going to be placed at that line at the bottom and the side of my handle will be aligned with that center mark I made. So we'll do that, we'll place it that one on that side and you're going to fold it down and place it right beside the other one so it looks like this. So again, the raw edge of my handle is lined up with this bottom line we drew and the side edges of the handle are lined up with that middle mark we made. So we need to stitch that in place. So I'm going to do it like this where I get the first one, first side stitched down. And then I'll bring my handle, making sure it's not twisted, down and around, lining it up with that line that I drew. And then I'm just going to back stitch across it. There we go just like that. So see how that looks? So the bottom of the handle is aligned with that line we drew here and then the center of the handle here is aligned with that center mark. And I'm just going to give my handle a little press just to sort of get it out of the way. Now we need to take our strap sling and we're going to place it again at that bottom line we drew on either side of the handle. And if you did, oops, I forgot to snip the Thread. If you did use an accurate seam allowance, you'll notice that this fits right in between, and I can't see this well, right in between the strap sling when you get it all lined up, all nice and straight. It fits in between the strap sling just like that. So now we're going to stitch this, sew this down, and then there's another row of stitching that you have to make. So there's two, so you'll baste it, and then there's another stitching that you have to make from the bottom up of your strap that you'll make across multiple times. So I'm going to do this one side at a time again. So I'm going to line this up with that bottom line and in line with a right against my handle. Stitch it across and I'm going right across the handles again, which is nice because it adds some extra support. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to stitch back across. And that's kind of like back stitching without back stitching. So there's how it looks so far. So see how the hand, how the strap sling 
is right on either side of the handle. The handle fits right in the middle of my strap sling, right in the center. So here's my handle. It's right in the center of the strap sling. We do want to keep that tucked this way because when you carry the bag, it's out a bit like this. And that helps reduce the bulk too. That's why Tara designed it that way to reduce that bulk. So now there's that second row of stitching that I need to make. So I made the line. You may want to make the mark for where that second row of stitching goes. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it over and stitch over it. And this is going to really help keep this secure. to stitch back and forth a few times you can even do it a couple more if you want but I went back and forth so that's how it looks so the basting stitch here and then my second row of stitching there now we need to take our strap support and we need to place it on top of this and that strap support as you can see so you see all my raw edges as soon as we put the strap support over top it covers that all now you have the two lines, the one that you made that was closer to the um, folded edge here, the seam. So you have the top line and the bottom. The bottom is where we lined everything up just now. Now we're going to place the strap support, lining it up with that top line we made over top. And you can use some double-sided tape to help hold this in place, which is what I will do. Oops, everything is going in the garbage. And again, this strap support extra stitching again and it also hides all that stitching and all those raw edges as well. Now those seams are not in our top seam allowance either. It's all in the back of the bag. So using my double sided tape that's going to help hold this in place. I'm going to line this up with the top line that I made. So it's the top line was here. It's lined up with that top line covers everything so you see no raw edges. Now I'm going to stitch over top of this um, strap support, both on the bottom and the top, and you can do extra rows of stitching if you want. The choice is yours. So I'm not going to use a full top stitch length that I use because I kind of want to have a little bit of extra security on my stitching. That's just a personal preference, but you can use your regular top stitch length. And if your machine is struggling to get over the little bit of bulk there, a humper jumper may help, a bigger needle, anything like that may help your machine. So. Stitch all the way around. And I'm going to do a second row of stitching just because. Another thing you can do after is add some rivets again to that area if you want over where those strap, the, the handle is and the strap swing is as well. And you can do stitching all the way through this, like keep going all the way around and making a rectangle all the way around if you want. If you want to do it all the way through, maybe do some X's inside, whatever you want, you can definitely do it. Just have fun. Especially if you're doing this in a solid color and you want to add some pop, you can do some really cool stitching here if you want along your strap support. So now my strap support is attached. It's covered all those uh, raw edges. Now we need to attach our um, strap anchors. Now for the strap anchors, they need to be placed at a height from the bottom up and unfortunately my marks are gone because I used my iron to press this. I totally forgot that would happen. So I'm gonna pause the camera and quickly make the marks from the bottom up. So you're gonna make the marks from the bottom corners up and that's where your strap anchors will sit. So I'm going to go do that and come right back. Marks are now made, so if you haven't, go ahead and make those marks. Now we're going to take these strap anchors and we're going to place them so that they are 
on the mark from the bottom up and over, which is another mark I didn't make, so I just have a ruler hanging here on my wall, so I'm going to use my ruler to make those marks. So the strap anchors hang off the edge by a measurement that's given in the pattern, so you'll want to refer to that for that measurement, and it was nice and easy. So I've made the measurement, I'm going to place the strap anchor at that line and line it up with the measurement of how far this has to hang off the edge of my fabric. So just like this, I've made the marks, I'm placing it so you see how it's hanging off the edge of my fabric, clip it in place, and then we're going to base these in place using two lines of stitching. And just so you know, the D-rings are facing in towards the center of your bag. And then that is how they look for now. We're going to set the back aside. We've attached our flap, our strap sling, our handle right here. See if you can imagine this is how the bag is going to look with the handle. And our two strap anchors. Set this to the side. Put it away. Now we're going to prepare the front exterior. And for this, first we need to get our cord. And I normally would have done this off camera, but I decided to do this on camera. So for this, you need to take your cording and your, um, what do you want to call this, cord lock might look different than mine, but you have to get the cording through the opening of the cord lock. Just like that. So just like this, and I'm just going to make mine so that it's even. I'm just pushing mine all the way to the end. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Push it all the way to the end. I just did that just so that it's out of my way. We'll set this to the side for now. Now we need to grab the casing, the cord lock casing. So that is this right here. And there are some measurements you need to make on oops, one short end of both the cord casings. So you'll want to make a mark on both those short ends. And the measurement is given in the pattern. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've got my measurements all made. So now we're going to press that one short end with that measurement given in the pattern. And it's just one short end. Just like that. So just one short end on each so that when they're together on the bag, they look like that. Now there's another marking you need to make for the long edge to press it in place just like that. And you can use some double-sided tape. You can press it and then use some double-sided tape to help keep this in place. So I'm going to go press this and then I'll place some double-sided tape along it and then I'll do that for both and then I'll come back and we will continue on. My casings are now pressed and I've also used some double sided tape to really keep those edges pressed in. So we're going to place these to the side just for now and move on. So I'm clipping them together so I don't lose them. Now we need our front pocket exterior. And on your exterior front pocket, there is a mark that you need to make from the top down and centered for the placement of the other half of your snap. So again, using your manufacturer's instructions, you'll install this. I'm just going to put some tape around this so I don't lose this other magnetic snap that I have left. So 
go. Same method that I used previously, I'm going to do with this as well, except for this time, oops, this time I'm going to use some fray stop, or fray check, I can't remember which one I have, on my splits, because I'm cutting through quilting cotton. we made and if you're using a twist lock of course you'll have a different process for adding your twist lock so I'm folding those in some duct tape and again that I just put tape there because I find it helps hold the prongs in place but also helps prevent the prongs from getting snagged on anything in the future so it's just more of a precautionary thing as well. So now my magnetic snap is installed. Now we need to grab our front pocket lining and we're going to place the front pocket lining right sides together with the front pocket exterior with the top edges aligned. So just like this, top edges aligned. And you will notice that the lining is smaller than the exterior. You didn't make a mistake. It is cut correctly. So now we're going to sew along this edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And now we need to bring this bottom edge down to meet the bottom edge of the exterior. So just like that. So it's going to cause this to bump out a bit. And now I'll sew across that bottom edge as well using the seam allowance given in the pattern. to turn this so it is right sides out and you're going to pull the bottom edge of the pocket so the front pocket is comes down oh sorry first we want to press our seams though so first we're going to press the seams. I was skipping ahead because I didn't want to get up to press. I thought I could do it after. So now we're going to press our seams down towards the front pocket lining. So I'm going to go off camera, do that, then we'll come back and we'll turn. I was hoping I could do that without that, but that step is first. So we'll do that, press our seams down towards your lining, and then we'll come and turn it right sides out. Seams are pressed down towards the lining. Now we need to turn this right sides out. Now there is a measurement that we need to make on the front pocket on the on the right side. So we're going to go off camera again because as I mentioned earlier I don't show any rulers on camera but I'm going to go off camera so that I can make that mark. So I'm going to make that mark and come right back and we will continue on. So there's a mark that you need to make from the bottom seam on the exterior front pocket and we'll make that mark and then we'll come back and continue on. Now, where that mark is that we just made from the bottom seam up, we're going to fold this exterior at that mark. So the, just the exterior half of your pocket. So I'm folding it on that line that I made, just like that. So there's the line and I folded it at that line. And then when I do that, I'm smoothing this out. And you'll see that that causes the seam of the front to come down into the back. 
Now we need to press this with our iron. So again, I will go off camera and I will do that and I will come back and we will continue on because the next step is to top stitch this pocket once we have it all pressed really nice. And just keep making sure that those seams, I may have to repress that lining seam. Just make sure that those seams are still pressed towards the lining. So I'll do that and come right back. Seams are all pressed. Now we need to top stitch across this top straight edge here. So I'm going to do that now. So it's along the top edge of your pocket. So again, remember part of the front of the pocket, the exterior is down where the lining is. And then we folded it at that line we made at the bottom from the bottom up from the seam. So now I'm top stitching at that top edge. There we go, so I've top stitched that top edge. And another thing I wanted to note, when you're pressing with an iron, if you have a magnetic snap, careful not to touch that magnetic snap because you don't want to demagnetize it. So now we need to take this and grab our main exterior. So the one that has no strap or anything attached to it at this moment. And there's a mark from the bottom that you need to make from the bottom up. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've made my marks. And that's where the bottom of your pocket will sit. So we'll line it up, the bottom of the pocket, with those marks, pin it in place, and then pin all the way up the sides. So now we're going to sew across the bottom seam and up the sides as well of the pocket. So you're basting the sides in place. So what I like to do is stitch across the bottom to get it held in place and then I'll back stitch and then I'll stitch up one side and this is just because it prevents the pocket from shifting on me when I'm sewing. Now flip this over because I know these seams are all aligned here and stitch up the side here and get to where the pocket ends and it's stitched in place, trim all my threads. And that's how it looks we have this cute little pocket and that magnetic snap will be used when we um, snap our flap over that's where your magnetic snap will attach or your uh, twist lock so now what we need to do is with the main exterior right side up or sorry wrong side up we need to make marks from the bottom up on the main exterior and our sides so there's markings that you need to make on both edges so from the bottom up you'll see them here and you'll want to make those marks and I made that with a pencil within my seam allowance and that's just so that if I happen to hit it with my iron I don't lose it but you may want to use a pen that is fabric safe so I have those marks already if you don't have those marks go ahead and make them now then with our main exterior right sides up we're going to place an exterior side right sides down or pretty sides touching on top so they are right sides together. Make sure your sides are aligned, pin them together, and those markings that we made are going to be where we're going to stop sewing or start depending on which way you go. So you want to make sure you're stopping at that mark from the bottom. So stopping at that mark when we stitch it. So we'll stitch all the way down the side and we'll stop when we hit this mark that we made. And you wanna make sure you use the seam allowance given in the pattern and make sure you back stitch at start and stop. Stop. 
just like that. We need to press the side open, but first I'm going to repeat that for the other side as given in the pattern. But you can press this seams, these seams open right now if you prefer. Some people like to do it one at a time. I'm going to repeat that whole process for the second side. I'm glad I wear glasses because some of these times, sometimes they kind of fly and hit me in the face like that did. It sort of bounced off my head. So I'm glad I wear glasses. It's almost like protection. So starting at that mark, I'm just going to stitch all the way up the side. going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press those seams open then I'll come back and we will continue on so I've gone ahead and pressed those seams open and really take your time to press it you do want to take your time and I know it's going to be a bit hard because you have that bulk of that front pocket but take your time pressing and again be careful of your magnetic snaps now once you have that all pressed there are some lines that you need to make and it, uh, you can actually see them you need to make from the top down and there's a measurement from the top down that you're going to make and then another measurement so you end up with these two lines so go ahead and do that i did that while the camera was paused so once you have those lines made so first one from the top down and then the second one from the top down we'll take our drawstring that we have with our cord lock on it and we're going to place it at that bottom line. And when you place it at the bottom line, part of it has to be protruding off the end. And I have tape on the end of this. I'm gonna trim it so that it's even with the end of my cord. That's just to prevent it from fraying when I cut it. But apparently I didn't cut it very well, I guess. Um, so there is a measurement from the end of the cord over for how far this will overhang or hang off the edge of your fabric, just like we did with those D-rings. So you'll want to put, do that, have them overhanging off the edge at that bottom mark, so that second mark. So you have the one down from the top, first one, and then the second one down. So the further mark down is where you're placing this at that line, so under the line. So I'm lining up the top, I guess you could say, of the, the cord with that line and it's hanging off the edge and I'm going to stitch it in place. Ooh, gotta make sure my finger wasn't there. Stitch it really, really well. And I'm kind of going backwards and I'm stitching that in place. I went back and forth many, many times. No harm in going over it, plenty of times. It's only going to lock that on there more for you. Oh, why did my thread come out? My thread likes to jump out today. All right. All right. Try this again. So the second side, I will line up that mark so it's protruding off the edge with the line I made. And I'm just back stitching like no tomorrow. Just going crazy. So I don't know if you can see how much I backstitched, but I backstitched quite a bit. And that really locks that in and secures that. I, once we sew everything together, you'll also have it secured as well. But that really secures that. Now, what we need to do is take our cord casing and place it. Where is my cord casing? Place it over top of the cording. And you're going to line up the casing with that top line you made. So remember, there was two lines we made, one from the top down. So one from the top down, you're going to line up the top of your cord casing with that top line there. But the edge that we have folded here, you want that to be towards the center. You want the raw edges to be aligned. So I'm going to use a clip on the end here and make sure that casing is in the center of the, or the cording, sorry, is in the center. And I just wanna make sure Yeah, so you want to make sure the cord is in the center. The drawstring is underneath. You're not stitching over that drawstring right now. 
And what you can do is you can use some pins to help pin this in place so that it holds it in place. Normally I would have said double-sided tape, but double-sided tape might still not be might not be good because it'll be in the way of your cording later. It might be too wide. So just use your clip, your pins. So one side. And then we're going to stitch down one end of the casing and under the bottom edge. So you're not stitching across this this front edge here where your cording is coming out because you don't want the cording to stick. So you're just going along the top and bottom edging of that casing. So top stitch along the top of the casing and the top of the casing goes with that line, remember? The line that we made from the top down, the top line, that's where we're stitching. Oh, Try to stick that inside the pillow there. And you can stitch down the side edge here if you want. And then come across the other edge. And again, make sure that drawstring in the center, you don't want to stitch over it, and you're not turning and stitching up that side either, that short end. So back stitch really well at start and stop. So see, I don't know if you'll be, yeah, you can see the stitching. So I stitched across the top, down the side, and across the bottom of the casing. And now we're going to repeat that for the opposite side. So again, making sure that's all lined up. Raw edge is aligned and top edge of casing aligned with the top edge of the um, line that we drew. Some pins to pin this in place. Oh, that pin is really bent. I have to straighten that out after. So, pinning it in place. Again, I'm not using double-sided tape here because I don't want the double-sided tape to be in the way of the drawstring later. Alright, so again, across the top, or across the top, down the bottom, and then across the bottom, sorry. So I'm going to do this differently because to make sure the top stays in place so I'm going to do my top edge first and back stitch right over there. I'm going to make sure that stays nice and lined up for me. Okay and now I can go back and stitch oops the bottom edge because I've already oops, I've already got that top edge sewn down. So now it's just a matter of keeping this nice and flat and stitching this in place. And I'll still stitch up the side. No harm in that. There we go. Look at that. We have our casing and a drawstring in. Why won't this thread? This thread doesn't want to be cut. There it is, we have our casing and our drawstring all attached. So now when you pull the bag, it'll cinch it when you pull the drawstring. And we don't want it to be cinched like that right now. Now we need to, hang on, I just want to make sure. Now you could have stitched before we stitched this down, you could have stitched the end here, top stitched that end, it's saying. I didn't. So now what we need to do is attach the back side of our bag to this piece, and I'm just trying to erase that chalk mark there, that'll go away after. So we need to take the back piece and attach it to this completed front and side so far. So you're going to take the back 
with the front right sides up and place the back, aligning it with one side. So aligning the sides, clip it together. Make sure your D-ring is sandwiched in between the back and front and make sure it's out of the way so you don't stitch over it. There's also going to be the marks on the other side of your side. So you'll want to remember to stop or start at those marks. So just like that. Now with the seam allowance, I'm going to sew all the way down that side. over that strap anchor. It just helps lock it in and adds that extra strength as well there. So when I got to the strap anchor, I backstitched over it. So there's one side. Now we need to pull this over to the other side. Pin it all in place. Remember to stop and start. And she does recommend to reinforce, but after we stitch, so you can reinforce over those strap anchors after you stitch it. I just do it while I'm stitching all the way down. Another area I'm going to go over and back stitch on this side because I didn't remember is where that cording is. I want that to also be reinforced. And if you're going over your strap anchor and you find your D-ring is sort of in the way of your presser foot, Try using a zipper foot, and I can't back stitch for some reason, so I'll turn it around. Try a zipper foot because that will help you get past all that um, bulk, I guess you could call it, and be able to stitch past it without your presser foot getting in the way. So I've stitched over where, where's the back, where the strap anchors were when I went down, I have stopped where we were supposed to on the bottom. And that is our bag so far. We have this cube looking thing with our back and our front. I'm pretty excited. I love this part when we get to this part of the bag. Now we need to attach our base. So grab your base and you're going to slip it into the exterior so it's right sides together. Line up the bottom edge of the base with the bottom edge of your exterior, one of the long edges. So right now mine's going against the front of the bag. Clip it all the way along. And I'll show you how it looks once I get it clipped. So I've clipped it all the way along one edge. So I'm now going to start sewing where I stopped sewing. So you know how we stopped and started earlier? Well, that's where I'm going to start sewing. And that helps also prevent any gaps in the bottom of our bag. So I stopped sewing here. I'm going to start there and go all the way across. So it's gonna kind of make a little point. Just make sure you move this other, this side, um, uh, side, exterior side, sorry, I couldn't think of the word exterior, side out of the way so you don't stitch over that. We talk so much during tutorials that sometimes we forget the easiest of words. So start with my needle down inside the previous stitches. Back stitch, start and stop, go all the way across. And this is gonna give a really nice boxed corner here doing this. I always love this result. Again, move that exterior side out of the way. You don't want to stitch over it. So I stitched across. So you can see I started and stopped where we started and stopped previously. Now take the other edge, the other long edge, and clip it together again. Same thing we did. Clip it 
you're just going to do the same thing and we're going to repeat this on all those sides so now I'm going to stitch that side again starting and stopping at those marks that I started and stopped at previously don't want that side exterior in my seam allowance so I'm just pushing it out of the way and I leave this up on the table because it's kind of pulling my bag down we're going to do the same thing on the sides and all I do is I just kind of flatten it out remove any bulk that's there that shouldn't be there so pull things out of the way clip it and I'm going to clip the other side because I'm just going to go right to the other side so clip it all along match up those seams you almost don't really have to when you get to the side seams because it's already sort of held in place due to the fact that we just sewed the two long edges I'm going to tuck this inside now that I'm not really worried about sewing over it. It's kind of annoying me. It's getting in my way. So uh, we start with that needle down in these corners. Or not always, but try to. And again, stop when you meet those previous stitching lines. What that does is it creates no holes. You started and stopped and it gives a really nice boxed corner. I really like these box corners. Now what we need to do is trim these corners to reduce the bulk. And I wasn't so concerned about my um, threads because you know they're inside so I'm not super concerned about them do not trim where the anchors are so if you're trimming up a bit don't trim where your anchors are you want to keep that nice and long but I do trim a little bit off before the corner and after the corners just to sort of help give a nice crisp clean corner and don't trim your stitches. It's another thing you don't want to do. Don't clip those stitches. You can see, like right here, get that trimmed. Clean up my little mess. Now, if you do accidentally clip any stitches, do not panic. It's okay. I've done it before. Just go back and back stitch over where you clip stitches. So I'm just checking to make sure all my stitches are still good. Yeah. So now we're going to set this to the side for now. Keep it turned right sides out. I mean, if you want to check it, you can, but keep it turned right sides out. And we are going to move on to making our lining. Now we need to grab our sunglass pocket, so that's this one here, and I have it written sunglass pocket. We're going to fold this with it right sides up so it's right sides together, and you should already have that interfacing attached to your pocket. Clip it together along that top edge, so you're going to have short edges and a top, a short, a long edge, sorry. We're going to stitch together along the top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Stitch all the way along. We've just made a tube, so now what we need to do is take that tube and turn it so it is right sides out. And 
then I'm going to use my turning tool to push out that edge. You can take this to your iron if you want and give it a quick little pressing, but I'm getting up and down a lot and starting to hurt my leg, so I'm just going to do that. Now we're going to top stitch along this top edge where the seam is. So we're going to top stitch along this edge where the seam is. to fold this pocket in half again. So you're going to bring the two short raw edges together and fold in half again. And you're going to press the bottom half well. And then you will top stitch all the layers along the bottom edge. I'm going to be a rebel and I'm not going to go to my iron. I'm going to press with my fingers and I'm going to give it a good press. And now I'm going to sew along the bottom edge, but I'll also baste the side edge together. So this is what your piece looks like when you're almost done. So we're going to top stitch that edge, the bottom edge. And then we want to baste together the side edge. And that just bastes these together. Trim your thread. And you've just made a little like little pocket for your sunglasses, which is nice because it's got that interfacing in there, so it'll keep them nice and safe. And I'll show you. Look at that. You can't really see my glasses, but my glasses are in there. So it's kind of nice to have a place for your sunglasses. You could use this technique in any bag actually to make a little sunglass case if you want to have one. So now we're gonna put this pocket to the side for now. Now we need to grab our zipper and our zipper tabs. And there's a measurement in the pattern for trimming the zipper. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for how long the zipper needs to be. Once you have it trimmed, you can place it with right sides up, place one of your zipper pocket tabs right sides together with the zipper on both ends. Place it right sides together on both ends. Just like that. And then we'll sew this with a seam allowance and we'll press the tabs away from the zipper, but we're not gonna top stitch yet. And you can stitch it actually with it so that you can see the zipper. So stitch it with it this way, just so you can see the zipper and know when you're stitching over it. So you can start and stop. And make sure you have your stitch length you use for stitching a bag together. So if you've got it at a top stitch length, don't forget to return it back. So I'm just stitching right on the zipper, that's it. I don't wanna go any further because we're gonna be trimming this in the next few steps. looks with the zipper tabs on. So now I'm going to press these away and I'm using my nails to press it away. And then I'm going to trim these evenly with the zipper. So you can actually keep it against the zipper too if you want to know where to trim. Just don't trim your zipper. The nice thing is, is if this isn't perfectly trimmed and it's kind of, you know, jaggedy, this is going to be sewn into the seam allowance later, so it doesn't have to be super perfect. Close enough, though. Just like that. 
and this I'm just basically using the zipper as my guide you could use your ruler and draw the seam for where to cut but I just did that and now I flip it back and that's how it looks we have both tabs sewn onto our zipper place that to the side for the moment now we need to grab one of our main linings right here and there's a measurement that we need to make from the top down so you'll want to go ahead and make that lining make that mark and then what we'll do is we'll cut at this line and I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to cut this with my ruler and rotary cutter just because I want a really nice straight line so I'm going to go do that so again mark from the top down and then cut it at that line so I'm going to go off camera make that cut and then I'll come back and we will continue on so I went ahead and cut these and or cut this sorry using my rotary cutter and ruler and what I did too was I marked a T at the top so I know where both of them join together and I also marked my centers of these two panels so we're going to just stick this to the side for one moment because now we need to grab our zipper that we had made earlier and another thing I went ahead and did was mark the center of the zipper because that's going to be important. Now you're going to want to grab one of your zipper pockets and I also marked this with a T so I knew where the top and bottom are because this is sort of close to being the same size on both sides so you want to make sure you have it oriented in the correct direction. So what you're going to do is once you have the center marked on your zipper pocket, you're then going to take the center of your zipper and you're going to m place that center mark with the center mark on your zipper pocket, pin it all the way across, and you're going to notice that the zipper with the tabs is longer than the zipper pocket and that's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. There's a thread there that I didn't cut. Then we're going to stitch this and if you don't have on your machine your zipper foot now is a good time to put it on and use your zipper foot because we're going to be sewing pretty close to the zipper and you want to have a nice accurate seam allowance when we go to uh, stitch this to the main panel. So zipper is right side up and the panel is also right side up so the wrong side of the zipper is against the right side of your zipper pocket piece and everything is centered so it looks like this right now next we're going to take the main lining bottom and we're going to place this right sides together with this piece we just sewed the zipper to so you're making a zipper sandwich so your zipper is right sides up your main bottom is going to be right sides down so the pretty side of your main bottom is going to be against the right side of your zipper so line up that center mark and then clip it the rest of the way and again your zipper tabs are going to be a little bit longer that is that is correct so clip it all the way across make sure everything's all lined up nicely and now we're going to sew across this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern so sew all the way from the zipper tab all the way across And when you come close to where your zipper pull is, lift up your presser foot, slide that zipper pull out of the way so you can get past it. And then continue stitching across. Cut your threads. And then, oops, we're going to take this, and what I like to do is I like to just finger press this first and flip these wrong sides together and we're going to press again with our fingers just finger press it you can take this to your iron but I'm gonna be lazy and not and I'm just going to keep finger pressing it because the finger pressing gets it good enough for me now we need to top stitch under that zipper where everything is that we just sewed together and I'm going to keep my zipper foot on and stitch this so go all the way across and if you've got a dangly zipper you'll want to be careful that it doesn't get under your presser foot putting my stitch length back to the length I like using for stitching so that's how that looks so far 
and your pocket. You'll notice the pocket is a little bit smaller than your main lining and that is correct. That's just going to help keep that out of the seam allowance when we get to stitching the bag together. Now we need to grab another zipper pocket lining and with that one right side up, we're going to place the zipper, completed zipper panel piece here on top. So lay it right sides up on top of the zipper pocket, which is right side up. Line up the center mark so it's centered. And again, this zipper here is longer than the pocket and that is okay. So now we're going to base this in place. Like that. Now we need to take the main lining top piece and we need to place it right sides down centered on top creating another zipper sandwich. So again that's where I have that T so I know that needs to be at the top when I have this flip. So I'm going to put it like this, flip it and then I know that my top is going to be where it should be. I'm going to center it up so line up those center marks and then clip the rest of the way. And also you'll know that it's nice and centered because your sides will line up nicely and evenly. So that's another great way to know that it's centered properly. And I just gotta go through all the layers and find that zipper pull and get that out of the way. Again, I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. There's my zipper pull. So I'm going to lift that up, slide it out of the way, and then continue stitching. Cut your threads. Now, here's where it's a little bit different. We're only pressing this main lining piece up. We're not pressing the pocket up. The pocket piece is staying down. So both my pocket pieces are here down. I'm just pressing the main top lining up. That is it. Nothing else. So just like that. And now we're going to top stitch across that seam. So again, just your main top was pressed up. Oh, it's rubbing on my scissors, it's making a funny noise. And that's how that looks when you get it all stitched together. I really like this type of pocket. It's really interesting and it's a nice way to get a pocket in your bag without actually having to, you know, make a zipper opening or a zipper overlay. Nice and quick and easy and you can do this with any bag. It's a great technique to learn. Now we need to stitch where these zipper tabs are that we didn't top stitch before. So right beside your zipper tabs. So we're going to do that now. And before I do that, I'm just going to switch back to my regular presser foot just because I don't need to have this on there anymore. So I'm going to switch back. We're not going to be sewing any other zippers. And now I'm going to top stitch on each side of the zippers. And you can start and stop right where the seam is. And if you don't want the back stitching there, what you could do is leave long thread tails and just pull them through to the back and tie them off. But honestly, you don't even really see the back stitching at all, so it's not that bad. If you just stay between the seams, you don't see the back stitching really and it kind of gets hidden. So there we go. That is done. Now we need to trim these zipper tabs so that they are flush with the lining. And I'm just using my scissors for this. You can definitely take this to your cutting board and a uh, cutting mat, sorry, and use your rotary cutter and your cutting mat. That's how that looks. Now we need to lift this up 
keeping it flat, we need to trim the zipper pocket that is longer so it is even with the shorter zipper pocket. And again, I'm just going to use my scissors for this. Now it's all even. Now we're going to sew the sides. Now you're only going to be able to sew up to where the bottom of the zipper is. You're not going to be able to get any further and that's okay. We have the stitching here on the tabs that help lock that little bit here in place too. So just get up as close as you can to the zipper. It's probably better to go from the bottom of the pocket up till you reach where those that zipper is. It's easier to go up towards the bulk than down away from the bulk or down from the bulk. So stop just under the zipper because you don't want to sew through the main exterior or the main lining. Sorry. Oh my thread, why does that keep happening to me today? Let's try it again. So I'm going all the way up, getting as close as I can to where that bottom of the zipper is. And we're not sewing the bottom of the pocket. This will be used to birth the bag later. But see, so I didn't sew through the main exterior or main lining. And what that did was there's no little hole there because we stitched here. So you see how there's like, if there's a small little gap, but you're not going to be able to get anything through there. And it's also closed off because we've stitched when we top stitched here as well too. So you don't have any gaps at all. So that is how it looks. Now there is a um, uh, measurement for how these should measure to be the same size. So I'm going to go off camera and measure mine just to make sure if anything is not the right size, trim to make it the right size. So I've checked everything and anything that needed to be trimmed, I trimmed it and made sure it's all the correct size, so we're good now. Now, remember that, um, I was gonna call it cell phone pocket, um, sunglasses pocket, remember that pocket? Well, we now have to take this and we have to place this onto this completed main lining that we just sewed a pocket to. So what you're going to do is there's a measurement on the left side from the bottom up that you're going to make. So you'll want to make that now I've already made mine, so now I'm going to take the bottom of this pocket and I'm going to line it up with that mark that I made and line up the raw edges on the sides. Just like that. We're going to base this in place along the side edge here. And you'll notice that the interfacing that we had fused earlier is not in that seam, which is excellent for keeping the bulk out of the seam allowance. So there it is. You have your little, I'll take my glasses off, your little sunglasses pocket or even just glasses if you want. Now I'm going to stick to this to the side because we're going to make a mesh pocket. So we need one of our sides, so I'm going to take the sticker off. We need our elastic, and normally elastic and I, we're not really friends, but we're going to try to make friends with this elastic. So what you need to do is stretch this over the pocket, and I just have to see which way this gets cut. I can't remember what is the top and what is the bottom of this elastic, so I'm just going to quickly check that uh, page. Where was that cut? What page? Oh, it's actually cut the same size and it looks a little awkward to me right now. So, okay. So now we're going to take this. For some reason it looks misshapen to me. Sorry about that. So now we're going to take this and we're going to stretch this elastic across and you need to use pins to hold it in place. Now, another thing I like to do is use some double-sided tape and I know double-sided tape may seem a little bit weird 
but I just find it really helps hold everything because I often have a hard time with um, this kind of elastic for some reason and I should have put that on the mesh not on there but I put it on there and that's not going to work so I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to put it at the top of the mesh and this is just how I do it and you can look and see which way your mesh stretches because the mesh does stretch so I have it so that the stretch is going sideways or horizontally so I have it going side to side now I want to stretch this elastic so that it is over the tape and you can already see it pulling in which is what we want. And I'm going to fold it over because it's sticky on both sides. And you see how it's already pulling it in? That's what we want. So now we need to take the mesh or the uh, mesh and the elastic and we need to stitch or top stitch this in place along the bottom edge here of the elastic. Stitch all the way. You're going to want to stretch your elastic as you're going. So I'm stretching it just to make sure. But you see how that double sided tape helped hold it in place and I didn't need to use any pins or anything. I just find that that really works for me, but you can definitely use pins. So now we have our elastic holding our mesh at the top. Now we need to take this and with your lining side right sides up, so the right side, I know where it is because I've made marks at the bottom, you're going to line this up with the side edges. So what I do is I place it on the bottom and I just put a clip at the bottom just so that I know that that's the bottom edge because I'm going to be clipping the side edges now. And the pocket is bigger than our lining side and that's so that you can fit you know your water bottle inside or whatever you want to put inside this little pocket. So I'm clipping it on the side. So see how I did that? I clipped it on the bottom and then I clipped over the one side. So I fold this over and clip it on the one side all the way up just like that. So there it is. Now I'm going to sew the sides of the mesh pocket to the side of the lining. Don't forget to backstitch it, start and stop, and I'm just basting this to the sides. So there's one side. Now I'm going to baste the other side. And as long as your basting stitches are going to be within your seam allowance, nobody will ever see this. So now it looks like that. And so you have this gap here with the stretchy elastic right there so that you can put a water bottle or anything inside. But now we need to close off the bottom and you're going to notice that we have a bottom here that is a little bit bigger than our side still. So what we need to do there is she has us gathering the mesh at the bottom so that it's ev evenly distributed throughout. So I'm just smoothing or evenly distributing it, sort of just making it gather along the bottom. And if you want, you can line up your center, find your center, line that up, and then go from there. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because it is going to be at the bottom of the bag. This feels like there's more there. But just sort of gather it up. You want to make sure that it's going to get caught in your stitching though when we stitch across the bottom here. There we go. So 
just like that. So I have it gathered at the bottom so you have a little pocket so it stretches. Now I'm going to stitch across the bottom to base that in place. Holding those little, you kind of made little pleats. So holding those little pleats. And just make sure your mesh is down when you're stitching that it doesn't come up because you don't want it to be up. You want to make sure you stitch all the way through all the mesh. And I'll show you if this works with my water bottle. Just like that. So now we're going to grab our mains. Hang on, where are they? everything so we just grab everything right now and you need your main and your lining side so on the wrong side of the mains there's markings that you need to make oh one of my markings is gone but I can still sort of see it there's markings that you need to make and these are the same things that we made on the other ones that are your start and stop marks so you want to make those on the bottoms of your sides and your mains so once you have this done take everything but one lining main and one side and place the, everything off to the side take one of your main linings right side up and I've just grabbed the one with the pocket now I want my mesh pocket to be on the opposite side of my sunglass pocket that's just a personal preference you can have it all on one side I just figure this way here there's no chance of me or whoever uses this bag accidentally hitting glasses while they're in your bag when you're trying to put a bottle in and out because it'll be over on this side it won't be in the way of the glasses it's just a precautionary measure so I'm going to take this and same thing we did with the exterior lay them so they are right sides together and then we will pin them all the way down the sides and once we have them pinned we will then stitch it all the way down so I'm going to start at the top and stop at that mark at the bottom and we're going to repeat this with all these pattern pieces and you're sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern so you want to pay attention to what that seam allowance is because we are veering to a different seam allowance when we sew this. So then, once you have that done, you'll repeat that for the other side. So take your other side, make sure it's wrong sides together, or right sides together, so wrong sides up. Make sure those marks are at the bottom. Place clips all along the edges. And then, so this is the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm just realizing that my pocket kind of got stuck in that seam a little bit on the other side, and that's okay. moved it out of the way this time. This very small amount of the pocket got caught. That's okay. Like if I pulled on this it would pull it and make like a like all this. See how I can do that now? But I don't want to make my pocket fray so I will leave. Actually I can get it out. I don't want to pull on the stitches though. I'll just leave it. So that's how that looks right now. Just like that. Now we're going to repeat with the remaining lining main panel. So attach it. What I'll do after to get that lining part of the pocket, I'll just take my duckbill scissors and I'll cut it close to the way. I'll do that now. So that I'm cutting it but not cutting any seam allowances. There we go. Now it's loose again. If that happens, you can do the same thing. Totally forgot to move the pocket out of the way. So same thing, starting at that, or stopping at that mark. Veer your seam allowance. When you get up to the top, veer back to the seam allowance given in the pattern. 
This gives a nice tight fit of the bag. Lining up all the bottoms and tops. All right, again, bottom up. Now we have our little cube or a rectangle cube. Now we need to take the base and we need to attach the lining base. Oh, no, we're not doing that yet. Hang on. Yes, we are. So you open the lining zipper pocket and now we're going to do the base. Sorry, I was just reading. I saw open the zipper pocket and I'm like, wait a minute. So zipper pocket is open as you can see now we need to take our base and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the exterior so place it so it is lined up on the sides at the corners and your centers if you have center marks on your base and clip it all the way across And then we're going to sew this edge going from where your previous stitching was all the way across to the other previous stitching. And don't forget to back stitch. Move that side out of the way just like that so the side isn't in the way and you don't catch it in your stitching and your pocket too. When you're sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern, Like that. Now we need to attach the other long edge to the lining bottom of the main panel. So again, corners and corner. And I'm pulling the side out of the way. So corners are lined up. And when you give it a pull like this, it helps everything line up for you. Just like that. So again, from one edge to the other, Move those sides out of the way, so just pull it out of the way so you don't stitch over it. And then we're going to repeat that for the sides. And I'm not going to use any clips, I'm going to be a rebel. fun to be a little bit of a rebel. One side. And the other side. And just as we did with the exterior, we're going to clip those corners just to reduce that bulk. You just want it to lay nice when you get the bag all constructed and put together. It's just, it's really worth it. I'm not going to, no, you know what I'm going to. I was thinking that's good extra stitching, but we've got lots of back stitching there where the uh, mesh is. There we go. It's like confetti. And it literally feels like confetti when I look at my floor sometimes and I see it everywhere. Alrighty. So that is how it looks. Now we need to place the lining inside the exterior. So you want to take the lining and flip it so it is right sides out. Because our exterior is currently wrong sides out. And this is where you can see, look at how nice those corners look. Like, 
they're just so sharp and crisp and when you push them out you just get this really beautiful crisp sharp corner i love it absolutely love it all right and let's just see did i clip stitching there no okay it looked like i did but I, because there's a thread i'm gonna have to pull out there all right so now we're going to take this and we're going to stick that in our lining right sides together now you want to know look at this this is kind of funny my magnetic snap has snapped inside i'm trying to find the angle that you can see this at has snapped inside it's hard to do this inside so it's all snapped together that's kind of funny all right let's pull it apart so now you want to figure out which side of the bag do you want your zipper pocket to be and I know I want my zipper pocket to be on the back of the bag so when this is inside the bag it just snapped together again I'm going to put it like this and just hope for the best usually I do it with the exterior right sides out all right, so now with it inside the bag, you're going to line up all your edges here, your seams at the top, and you can press these seams open. Another thing I like to do sometimes is press the seam open and stitch across it to help hold it open. So I'm just finger pressing it open, lining up my seams, these top side seams, so do it at all four corners. Another thing you could have did was trimmed the lining seam allowances down. I didn't do that, but you can. You know what, I will go back and do that before we continue because I like to have all the bolts on. So I'm gonna trim down those lining seam allowances. Sorry, I'm gonna use my pinking shears too for it. So all your lining seam allowances, I'm going to trim it down. it's going to reduce even more bulk for us when we turn the bags right sides out you'll get a nicer looking bag I feel when we don't have as much bulk in those sides you don't have to trim the bottom if you don't want but I will oh. okay this is where I don't remember if it was on this tutorial, it feels like it was so long ago, but my pinking shears sometimes are a little bit hard to use. I just find they get a little too hard. So sometimes I just gotta go to my other scissors. I'm just trimming the bottom seams. Trim, trim, trim. Alrighty, we're almost done. And really, we're almost done the whole bag, which is awesome. Okay, so just move my confetti here. Turn the lining again so it is right sides out. You're going to place this inside the exterior. Place it where you want your zipper pocket to be, front or back. Hopefully I didn't just put mine the wrong way. Open up your seams and line up the side seam of your lining with the side seam of your exterior. Line those up. And remember, we have pressed these seams of the exterior open, but not the lining, so you can just finger press them open. Or if you want, you can push the seam to one side of the lining and leave the exterior open. The choice is yours. I just put that to the wrong side. <laughs> All right. My hands don't want to work anymore and the fabric doesn't want to cooperate there we go press that open line up another seam so all my side seams are aligned
Usually I stand to do this when I'm clipping a bag, just because I find it easier to have that bird's eye view. So now I'm just clipping the rest of the way and I'll show you how it looks once I get it all clipped. once it's all clipped. So I've lined up the side seams here with the side seams of the lining and now we're going to sew around this entire edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And make sure your stitch length is at the stitch length you use when sewing a bag. Also make sure your flap is down and it's not going up so that you don't stitch over it here. of my bag will be nice and crisp. This is just on my exterior, just the bottom seam, just to help reduce that bulk down there. If you didn't notice, I'm just all about reducing the bulk apparently on this bag. Alright, now we get to turn it right sides out. This will be easier than that strap sling, I promise you. Maybe. <laughs> oh, you know what? That was snapped again. So the magnetic snap that I used is really good because it keeps snapping back together. push out my corners and you can go ahead and take a turning tool which is what I will grab now and hope out your corners even more. Where is my turning tool? There it is. So just gently poke them though. Don't push too hard because you don't want to break any stitches. So just gently push it out. get these really nice crisp corners from the way we stitched that bottom to the bag. Now this is made with fleece so it's going to have that little bit of structure but it's not going to have a lot of structure but I mean still will hold up. It'll be a nice bag for a day out or anything else like that of a toddler bag even. So we have to push it down into the bag and roll that seam here between your fingers to get it out nicely. And I just keep rolling it. See how you have that top now, I'm not going to close my um, zipper pocket until I'm right, right done. So I'm just going to close the zipper pocket and like, zip it closed. I'm going to go press this, but just to give you an idea ow, of how it's looking. Good. And then when we fold this closed, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so I'm going to go and 
press this top edge, come back, we'll top stitch it, we'll add our hardware, and then we will be all set to take our bags out and show them off to everyone. So I've pressed that top edge of the bag, now I need to top stitch. I've taken out my extension table and I've also turned my bag so it is lining size out. It's just easier for me to top stitch my bag because I don't have a free arm on my machine. So that's why I've done that. So now we're going to top stitch all the way around our bag. And you know what, I should check my bobbin just to make sure it's full and it's actually not. That is funny, I don't know if you can see the size of this string, but not very much left so I'm super glad I checked because that would have been really disappointing. going to top stitch it all around the entire bag. So just keep top stitching all the way around your bag, making sure your flap is not in the way. You're just top stitching the top of the bag. That's it. Nothing else should be in your way. jumper. Another thing you can do is use a mallet to hammer it flat and that'll help give you a nicer seam at the top or a flatter seam at the top. So now that I've done that I'm going to grab my bag and turn it back so it is exterior out. And remember I didn't close the lining in the bottom of my bag or in the bottom of the zipper and close that hole because I know that I like to flip my bag around sometimes, so I like to have that there just so that I can still poke everything out. Now we're all top stitched. So that's how it's looking so far. Now that I've finished with the top stitching and I've got everything pushed out as much as it can go, I'm now going to take my zipper pocket, pull it out, and we're going to turn the zipper pocket under. So that it's like this. So you fold it back into itself so it's wrong sides together. And then use some clips to hold it in place. You can even take this to your iron and give it a little press. I'm just going to do this. So I'll fold it under. So if you look, you can see I folded it to the wrong side. Turning it inside itself. Then we're going to stitch this close, stitch all the way across. And if you don't like the way the machine stitches close, you just maybe don't like the look, you can use your um, hand needle, or a needle, sorry, and hand stitch it closed. So a slip stitch to stitch it all the way closed. I figure it's in a pocket. I really don't ever see that, so I'm okay with it but it's all personal preference. This is your bag. Do what you are comfortable with. All right, so I'm just trying to get everything flattened out. All right, so flattening out the zipper pocket. So that's including pushing those corners down as much as you can. There we go. And I have this little bit of tape on my zipper pull, so I'm just going to remove that before I forget. All right, so now this is what we have. We need to take our hardware and attach our hardware to our strap. One 
strapped um, swivel hook. So take your strap with it right sides up, slide one end up over the center, between the center bar or over the center bar. So there's one side and then I went over the center bar. So you see it just like that. Center bar. Just like that. Then take your swivel hook and you're going to slide it onto your strap just like that. So it looks like this now. And then you want to bring that loose end of your um, strap back up through your slider. So come back up. So you're going to kind of do it. You're going to go back up through the same way you did when you first went through the slider. So this way. So see how I came through on this side first? So I'm going to go up the same side I went through originally first and then back down over the same side I went originally. So it's same direction. And if you're nervous about making sure that it is ac correct, you can put a clip and then give it a tug and that'll tell you if it is correct. Now you can stitch over that to close it right here so you can sew that in place. Now make sure these pieces here that of the strap, the only pieces you're sewing through are the piece you just put over your strap. And I'm just trying to add a clip here but not have too much. So just like that. So I'm going to sew through that. Another thing you can do is use some rivets and add some rivets. So I'm going to back stitch a couple times. I'm going to sew again just a little bit up. It's kind of cool because the thread almost looks like it ended on the same color. So trim your threads. So yeah, you can use a rivet if you want. While it's not necessary, you can just sew as you just saw me do. You can use a rivet. Some people prefer to use rivets. Sometimes I like to just use a rivet because I find I've used rivets everywhere else on the bag. So just for the matches. So all my threads are cut. And now, as you can see, when I pull on it, it's good. So now we can adjust it wherever you want and you can clip it either to one side of the bag, so the left or the right, depending on which way you want to wear the straps way. And you can close up your bag, bring this as tight as it can go, snap your magnetic snap, and there you have it. And you don't even have to pull that as tight as that is if you don't want. You can leave it a little bit looser if you want it to be a little bit looser at the top so you want it to sort of be, you know, where you see it sticking out a bit. I mean, it's your bag. Do what you want. But I really like that, that there's that um, drawstring and then the flap for extra protection. And especially if you use a twist lock, it's a little bit more work to get into it. And then you have your little handle and your strap. You have everything. Just make sure it's not twisted. There you go. You have it all done.